Well, let's see what the behavior is of the best individual at different generations. At generation one, that is the very first generation where we used random strategies, the population was just a bunch of random strategies, the best average score was minus 81. So let's see why that was true. Here's the behavior of that strategy on this particular environment of cans. So the individual moves down and then it crashes into a wall. And it crashes into a wall again. And again. And you can guess the rest of its life it's going to spend crashing into a wall, scoring minus five points each time it crashes. So we'll get a slightly different score on different environments, but um, on average it does very poorly. Okay, by generation 10, the best average score was all the way up to zero. Okay, that's a lot better than minus 81. What did that individual do? Well, here's that strategy on this particular configuration of cans, and here's what it did. In other words, it did nothing. It just stayed put. By staying put, it didn't crash into any walls or do any other bad things, and so it got a score of zero. Well, that's not very uh, satisfying, but this was better than the other individuals in its population. Therefore, it got to spread its traits more than other individuals in its generation. By generation 200, the fitness was up to 240 for the best individual. Here's what that one did. It moves down. It doesn't pick up the can, but moves down further. Then it picks up the can. Then it comes back up, picks up the can. Now it's going to move back down. Moves all the way down to the bottom of the cans and then picks them up. So this one's doing a lot better than the previous one, the, than the one we saw at generation zero. This is of course 240 generations later. But this individual is picking up cans, but sort of in an inefficient way, as you could see. And by generation 1000, which was the maximum I let it run, the fitness is 492 on average. And here's what these in, this individual did does sort of exactly what you expect it to do. It moves down systematically picking up cans. My strategy, remember, said if you have a can in your site, pick it up. Otherwise, if there's a can in an adjacent site, move there and so on. This one is systematically going down and up and down and up. It's more systematic than my strategy. So that was one improvement over my strategy. But there was actually another improvement, which was a very surprising to me, innovation on the part of the genetic algorithm. To explain why the genetic algorithm outperformed mine, I looked at my strategy's behavior compared with the genetic algorithm's strategy's behavior in many different environments. Here's one particular type of environment that stood out. So here's Robbie in a cluster of cans. So my strategy says, pick up the can in the site you're in, then move to an adjacent site if there's a can in an adjacent site. Well here, there's cans in two adjacent sites, so it picks one at random. It decides to move west. Okay, it picks up the can. But now, because it cannot see past one square in either direction, it can't see this can over here. Since it has no memory, it's lost all information about this can and it's stuck. It doesn't see any cans around it and it doesn't remember that it had cans over here. However, the genetic algorithm figured out a way to get around that problem. And here's how it did it. This is the genetic algorithm strategy. It says, don't pick up the can. It moves over to the west. Now it picks up that can. But now, because it did not pick up this can here, it has sort of a breadcrumb trail or a trail of cans to get back to where the cans, the cluster of cans were. So it doesn't have any memory itself. Robbie doesn't have any memory. But the genetic algorithm invented this kind of external memory by leaving cans there and then having the robot come back and pick them up. So that was pretty ingenious, I thought. And that's an example of the genetic algorithm actually thinking of something that I didn't think of. 
thus doing better than my own strategy did. Robbie the Robot is a very simple example that I came up with just to teach people about genetic algorithms, but it does illustrate some interesting and general principles of evolution that are often seen in genetic algorithms. So let me just say what these are. First is that natural selection works. We went from a bunch of random strategies that performed very poorly and just using this kind of natural selection inspired by Darwinian natural selection, the genetic algorithm evolved what is essentially a perfect strategy. Also, evolution in our system seem to proceed via periods of stasis, that is staying at about the same fitness level, punctuated by periods of rapid innovation. And that's something that's also seen in biological evolution, in both molecular evolution, for instance, evolution of viruses and evolution of bacteria, all through to large-scale evolution that's seen in the fossil record, although this is a little bit controversial. In general, we're able to show that in genetic algorithms, this kind of behavior is quite common. Even though there's no external events happening to cause this rapid, steep innovation. And I should say that this, in biological evolution, this kind of phenomenon has been called punctuated equilibria. Another principle is that the phenomenon of acceptation is common. Acceptation means the shifts in a function of a trait during evolution. And we saw that happening in that trait that caused the robot to not pick up a can but move past it. So you actually saw that happening at generation 240, and that was the inefficient version of the strategy. There, it wasn't a very good trait because it caused the robot to be very inefficient and not pick up all the, not have time to pick up all the cans but it was honed by the genetic algorithm, by evolution, to actually be a very efficient trait in that it became only used in appropriate circumstances like the one I just showed you, where I compared my strategy to the genetic algorithm strategy. And so that trait was shaped by evolution from being a rather non-adaptive to a very adaptive trait. And that's also seen in biological evolution. And finally, the dynamics and results of evolution are somewhat unpredictable and hard to analyze, even in this extremely simple version of evolution. And it takes a lot of work to try and understand what the results of evolution are doing, why they are fit, and how they evolved. These are all, in genetic algorithms, unpredictable and typically either very hard or impossible to analyze.